starting with the latest news surrounding the heartbreaking story of 12-year-old Archie Battersby, who's been on life support in hospital for three months since being found unconscious in his home in April. Doctors believe he is now brain stem dead and say it's in Archie's best interest to end his life support. His parents, however, have fought against that decision at every level. Uh, we've been waiting for an update this morning as the Court of Appeal judges have already ruled that Archie's life-sustaining treatment should not continue beyond midday. We're still waiting for an update on that and we'll bring that to you um, as soon as we get it. I mean, just the most heartbreaking situation for that family. Also, Colleen, for the medical professionals involved. It's not an easy decision for them mm. either. Um, what do you think when you read this story, see the you oh. know, devastated parents? It was just tragic. I mean, what can you think? I mean, I can totally and utterly 100% say I know exactly how the parents are feeling. You know, anyone that has a child, you know, I'm sure I would be draped over my child's bed, punching anyone that even came near them. But like you said, you know, I do think the medical profession get a lot of stick about, you know, oh, they're murderers, it's like manslaughter. It's this. I don't think it's an easy decision. It must be a terrible decision to go up to parents and say, medically, this is what's happening, you know. And, they, you know, they've all been looking after him as well, so I imagine there's lots of tears all around. Oh, it's just... It's just an unbearable decision, and I, yeah. I don't know... I don't know how I'd feel. I do know how I'd feel. But there's also part of me thinks, would I... I'm trying to think... I know what I'd want for me, which is to have my child there in what, however. But equally, I'd want a part of me to think of my child, of what kind of life, if he does come round, and the medical profession are saying he won't, if mm. he does come round, what life is he going to lead? Yeah. I it's suppose just that's so it. horrendous. You see, the, there is no deeper love, I don't think, than from parent to child. It's a, a kind of love that you can never describe until you actually go through it. Mm. So I hear everything you say and I admire the medical profession enormously. Mm. But I know if it were me and the, the mother says that, um, that she has seen flicker of the eye or squeeze of the hand or signs. And sometimes, you know, and actually a lot of GPs will say this, sometimes a mother knows more about that child or as much mm. about that child when it's in trouble, mm. as the medical profession, yeah, because they know that child mm. inside out. So I would be fighting, uh, I would be fighting tooth and nail, I mm. think, yeah. because I feel it's been a relatively short time. It's too short a time, I agree. Too short a time. Yeah. I just want them to have more time to see if those reactions would improve. And at the other end of the age scale, a lot of elderly people are kept in hospitals and homes and care homes and everything for a long, long time. Mm. But, the, but they're... But they're probably conscious and, you know, this is where... It, it's so difficult because the medical profession are saying, as difficult it is, as, as it is for the parents to hear, it's like, you know, the squeezing and the flickering of the eye. They believe he's brainstem dead. Um, but, I have people to just... have, but they have come out of comas before. They have. Well, long, they have. You know, it's um, not impossible. Archie's, um, Archie's mum, Holly, uh, was actually talking to Kate Garraway on Good Morning Britain today. And as you all know, Kate Garraway's husband, Derek, um, has been terribly ill through COVID and so a very difficult interview for Kate, but she put a very interesting point to Holly, which is, you know, when you're making that decision and saying, please keep them on the life support, are you making it for that person, her son or husband, or are you making it for yourself? I have had to have conversations in my own head with myself sometimes when Derek was in the coma in a state of minimum consciousness about how much my frenzy to fight for him and to check every possible option was about me and my needs. Have you thought about that? You now, if there was no progression signs and he was going backwards or there was no improvement whatsoever, I would have no choice but to think different, but he's not. I feel every day he's giving me different indications to continue to keep fighting. You, under, you can understand that, Sophie, can't you? She believes mm. that there are these little signs that she believes she's seeing, and it's her truth, her belief. Yeah. And as much as we can say perhaps she's in denial, who, who, it's not for us to, to say that. We might think it, and I'm sure there's people out there that are, are probably thinking perhaps she's doing this just for her. And yet uh, this part of me feels this sense of 
I feel, just feel so, so, it's such a hard situation to be in. It reminds me of when I was in hospital and I had been told the prognosis that I, I was never going to walk again. And I think uh, my mum at the time was just absolutely, there was no way she was going to take that information as, like, fact. There was this slim, this tiny little bit of hope in her that perhaps we could be that story that you might read in the papers one day that was that, was that kind of typical headline of, oh, you know, child defies doctors and walks again. And that, that story is very... It's, it's picked up by the media, those stories, we see them a lot. And I think it gives people, like this mother here, that kind of sense of, my child could be the anomaly, my child could be the difference, my child might be the one that actually says, no, you know what, we ignore the doctors, we did our own thing and we, you know, we took control. And the, the, it's, it's a really dangerous place to be in because you, you don't know if you're going to be that story, right? So mm. we, we, my mum, when, when I had my injury, we, f we clung on to some headlines about people being made to walk again who were paralysed and we went off and we saw, found other alternative ways to get help. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. But for every one of me, there might be another woman who goes out there and tries to take control of and, her and situation. And your mum fought for you. And my mum fought for me. And I was just going to tell you about my sister, for example. And she was in Northern Ireland. I was in this country. And uh, I got a call from my brother to say, my brother Charles, to say they're going to switch Lena's machine off. She was seven years older than me. She had um, quite a lot of issues, you know. She had had a heart attack. Uh, she had very bad diabetes, etc. But she was in a, in a coma. I have to tell you, I shouted at the doctor down the phone, do not switch that machine off till I get there. I got the first flight across and I fought tooth and nail for it not to be switched off. And you know, my sister lived for two and a half years with a very good quality of life mm. issues, but she lived for two and a half years further. But, and I'm glad I fought for her. But she was in a coma. Did they mm. say to you she's brain... Yes, they were never going to switch it off dead. on that basis. Yeah. They just said she'd be a vegetable from there on in. Yeah. She wasn't. Two and a half years yeah. of fairly good life that her family could enjoy, etc. It's those stories so that make people hold on hope, isn't it? Definitely. It's that story. You go, oh, I, I once read this story about somebody that it didn't happen to. And maybe there's hope. And that's well, actually, you, you talk it. of maybe there's hope. I'm just, I've just been told that the Supreme Court have accepted the family's submission so that they will now look at the case. So I believe that means that they will not switch that off today that they will look again at the case okay. and they will let... Sorry, they will let them know whether they'll look at the case. But I do believe that means at this precise moment they He's will not be there. looking oh, to switch off right. the life support. Oh, so We've literally just heard that <clears throat> um, coming in. So, obviously, we will be talking about that story um, a lot more when we know a few more details.